Hey guys, welcome to New Zealand's Biggest Gap Year. It's an epic challenge that Laura, my partner, and I decided to tackle a couple of years ago. We had to do 365 activities all around New Zealand in only 365 days. And this is day 95, in which we're heading in the heart of the Abel Tasman, Tasman National Park with Abel Tasman Eco Tours. At the end of this video, join me when we're going to go over the questions that you had the first time we published the video to answer them for you. See you then. This morning we are leaving the Bound Backpackers really early because we have a meeting with the team from Abel Tasman Eco Tours. If you remember, we've done a tour with them a few days ago, but they told us that they had a tour around the inlets and bays of the Abel Tasman National Park and we couldn't resist to join them again for another day out. After putting the boat in the water, we are quickly making our way to the first pit stop of this tour, which is going to be Split Apple Rock. It's probably the most iconic stop in the Abel Tasman National Park. Everybody gets a picture with it. And surrounding Split Apple Rock, there is quite a few unique rock formations as well as shag colonies. As we find out with Stu, who is our guide on the Abel Tasman Eco Tours, Split Apple Rock isn't just a rock that looks like a split apple. It actually has a whole little ecosystem on there full of marine wildlife. And he also explains to us why the rock is shaped the way it is. Not only that, but the Abel Tasman National Park is also dotted with loads of little islands which are a haven for wildlife here. Stu has a background in marine biology and he really knows so much about the wildlife here in the Abel Tasman National Park. We stop at several shag colonies along the way and we learn so much about them and so many fascinating facts such as did you know that shags can swallow rocks to make them dive deeper in the water? It's so fascinating! Next up is Te Pukitia Bay. This is where we're going to be hopping off the boat and going on a small trek where Stu will be able to tell us even more about the Abetasman National Park. So after unboarding the boat and obviously getting our feet wet, we are all taking some time to relax on the sand while Stu is giving us some hot drinks and cakes just as a nice morning snack before the walk. This bay is the prime example on how amazing Abel Tasman National Park looks. It's golden sand beaches with a backdrop of thick rainforest. I love it. So Stu is going to take us on a little walk around and we are going in inside the thick bush where he's telling us more about the native plants. Well, it's got a chemical in there that's the precursor to MDMA if you've ever tried that. So this is the reason why Laura and I are going to eat that. We'll see if we're going to have a um, hell of a time. It's actually a really boring, really boring walk other than that, so that's why I get you to it's eat it. spicy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can oh. make um, pesto with it. It makes a good pesto. You can put it in salads. <laughs> anyway, we'll carry on. Why well, am I always eating the one that is disgusting? So it turns out that the MDMA full Kawakawa plant is not really tasty and Laura and I really are not big fans of it. Stu tells us later, obviously after we eat it, that it's usually drank as a tea which probably makes it much more bearable. Going on on our way, Stu is also showing us some high-tech possum traps which help them control the pests in the Abel Tasman National Park and making sure that the wildlife is well preserved. Stu also shows us some Manuka and Kanuka, which are the main trees that grow in this section of the Abel Tasman National Park. And then we continue making our way up to an absolutely stunning viewpoint, which has amazing views of the surrounding beaches and forests of the Abel Tasman National Park. This viewpoint is known as Speedhead and overlooks a couple of stunning inlets. They are turquoise water bathed in golden sand beaches. It's perfect. On the way down, we are getting warmer and warmer and our merino wood layers, supposed to keeping us in check in case of the weather changing all the time, are just not doing a good job right now. They are cooking us. 
After jumping on the boat and landing on another beautiful beach, we are sitting down to tuck into some lunch and just sort of take in the amazing views around us. Stu is showing us some fascinating little marine creatures like shrimp and starfish and different shells as well. It's amazing how he just picks up something straight away from the ocean and knows exactly what it is. And now we are jumping back on the boat once again to make our way back towards Marahau. And on the way back we do spot a few little blue penguins but unfortunately they are too quick, too small for us to even attempt to film them. Although little blue penguins are more prominent in other parts of the South Island of New Zealand, Stu is explaining us that there are a few colonies around the Abel Tasman National Park which are actually currently breeding. This is fascinating, the amount of wildlife that we got to see in such a short tour. Tomorrow we're going to do something a bit more traditional on the Abel Tasman National Park. We're going to take the water taxi and we are going to go sea kayaking and then a bit of hiking. It's really the traditional backpacker activity um, in the Abel Tasman National Park and it's something which is long overdue because we've been spending so much time around this park, it's time to get in. All right guys, so don't panic about the little blue penguins, by the way, we didn't get a shot of them right now, but I can guarantee around the end of New Zealand's Biggest Gap, actually around the end of our loop around the South Island, we'll be able to show you some absolutely fantastic footage of those penguins. They are amazing creatures and uh, yeah, don't panic, you'll see plenty. Um, all right, so let's go over the questions that you guys had the first time we published this video. We do love when you guys ask us questions, so if you do have any questions, by the way, put them in the comment of this video, or even better, if you want to join us live, every Sunday at 8 a.m. New Zealand time, we sit down on that couch over there, and we answer all your questions for about one hour, helping you plan your trip to New Zealand. So if you want to join us then, make sure to hit subscribe, and you get a notification or stuff happened. All right, so Ashwini says, um, Hi, I need some help in deciding. Um, is Abel Tasman more beautiful or is the Bay of Islands more beautiful? Uh, he say he only has the time to do one of them so he needs some help deciding and uh, with a bit more context he actually tells us that he's traveling with two small uh, kids. So he's asked us which one is our personal favorite. Um, so we kind of uh, thought about it uh, for, for a wee while and we think that actually the Bay of Islands is a little bit more kids friendly because most of the tours there are going to be a little bit shorter. The boat that you usually use are slightly bit bigger. Um, so we thought that the Bay of Islands may be better. But when it comes to like sheer beautifulness, if you were not traveling with kids, I think we would go for Abel Tasman National Park. So there's a little bit of both right here. But for Ashwini, which is uh, planning to travel with kids, uh, we decided to go for uh, the Bay of Islands as an answer. So that's the kind of question that we answer all the time by the way during our live session so if you want to plan your trip with us definitely join us to the during the live session Ashwini and even if your name is not Ashwini. Uh, another uh, comment that we had um, uh, was from Anna a witter that says that MDMA is actually ecstasy. So she's talking about some of the um, the substances that was in kind of those plants. And she said that's potentially harmful, but obviously in the leaf form and in such a small concentration, um, it just tastes uh, foul and does not cause any harm. So um, it she actually su suspect that you maybe even have some medicinal pur uh, purposes this herb itself so that's a cool thing to know yes of course we did know that mdma is a bad drug and we're not planning on taking any mdma uh, it was just a fun fact that we learned about that plant um there is a lot of plants that i end up tasting in this country and they're not at all none of them actually tasting good but uh you know some of them have some fun story behind like you know being made of the same stuff that ecstasy is made of. Anyway, if you guys found this video useful, make sure to like and subscribe. It's a free way to support the channel. And, you know, you guys stay safe out there. You keep being happy. And we see you in the next video in which we're going to keep exploring this area, this beautiful area of New Zealand. See you on the next episode of New Zealand's Biggest Gap here. Bye-bye.